This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Tonight, the Missouri Department of Conservation is investigating a hunting incident that left an 18-year-old dead. That teen has been identified as Trent Bush, a student at Winfield High School. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. I'm Kelly Jackson. Bush was shot while duck hunting in Pike County. This happened early yesterday morning at the Ted Shanks Conservation Area. Christine Byers reports from that area tonight. Trent Bush was a high school senior out here hunting for ducks with friends early Sunday morning when he was shot. Conservation officials are calling it a hunting incident and nothing more. It happened at the Ted Shanks Conservation Area here at 720 AM Sunday in Northern Pike County. That's about 110 miles northwest of St. Louis. Protection Division Chief Randy Doman of the Missouri Department of Conservation confirms to five on your side someone in the group of friends shot Bush. The Pike County Sheriff's Department is also assisting with the investigation. Sheriff Stephen Cordy tells five on your side this was an accident with no malicious intent. Bush was a high school senior at Winfield High School in Lincoln County. Jill Joller was his principal. He's a great young man doing what he loved. And we want to make sure that everybody gets to enjoy it in a safe fashion so that nothing like this ever happens again. Winfield School District officials tell us they had extra staff on hand today for counseling purposes with grieving students. In Pike County, Christine Byers, five on your side. And right now, police are investigating a shooting in North St. Louis County. It happened just a few hours ago on Priory Brook Road in Blackjack. Police say a man was found shot in a yard. He is being treated at a hospital, but no update on his condition at this hour. Police are still looking into what led up to the shooting. They tell us they are not looking for any suspects right now. Tonight, fire crews are investigating a fire inside a vacant home. It happened overnight, not far from Fairgrounds Park in North St. Louis. The St. Louis Fire Chief tells our Mercedes McKay it's something common this time of year. Fire crews were called to the scene here on Peck Street near Lee just after midnight and even hours later, as you can see, caution tape was still left over with pieces of glass and even pieces of the building still on the ground. It was a fire that took crews hours to put out, even calling in for additional backup once they got to the scene. Early Monday morning, a fire broke out at a vacant home in North St. Louis, but the bigger problem was the two occupied buildings that surrounded the flames. Thanks to the firefighters quick action, the buildings around it were only moderately damaged. St. Louis Fire Chief Dennis Jenkinson says now that the temperatures have dropped, they're getting these calls more often. Over the past couple of weeks, the chief says his crews have responded to six or seven similar incidents. In the city of St. Louis and surrounding areas, as it gets colder and as the temperatures drop, some of the, the homeless, the unhoused people, they start seeking shelter because it's too cold for them to be outside. So the obvious choice are some of the vacant buildings. And they go in there, they build small fires trying to cook or stay warm, and then they fall asleep, and then the fires get out of control. Thankfully, the fire chief tells me that no one was injured in this fire. Now, coming up at 6, I'll tell you how the fire department is working with the city on this vacancy problem. In St. Louis, Mercedes McKay, 5 on your side. Illinois lawmakers want an agency with the Department of Health to look into impacts from flooding at Cokia Heights. People living there have been dealing with sewer and flooding problems for decades. Congresswoman Nikki Budzinski and Senators Dick Durbin and Tammy Duckworth are pushing for a public health assessment. They cite a study from Washington University in St. Louis. The study claims nearly half of adults in the town are infected with a bacteria that can cause ulcers and gastric cancer. Time now for our weather first forecast. It's a quiet start to the week. Let's check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo. Beautiful day today. It really was, guys. So six degrees above the average. Average high is 46. We got up to 52. Beautiful sunset tonight. And of course, that morning low, though, 28 in St. Louis. But keep in mind, yes, it felt cold and some areas dropped into the teens. But the average low for this time of year is about 30. But the whole week, is really quiet, so high pressure right there, and it's starting to, to move to the east, so we're getting more of a southerly wind. Still going to be cold tonight, and current temperatures, as that dry air remains in place, we're dropping into the 30s in some spots. Litchfield, St. Charles in the upper 30s right now, and of course, at Lambert, 
it's always warmer about 49 degrees at this point. So south wind at nine miles an hour actually brings in the wind chill a little bit. Feels more like 45 degrees, but really dry air in place. A little bit of a breeze kind of lightens up a little bit tonight and the overnight lows not as cold as last night, but upper 20s and low 30s. Much more on the rest of the week coming up. A teen from Foley, Missouri is in the voice semifinals. Tonight, we'll find out if Ruby Lee will advance to next week's finale. She's getting tremendous support from her family and the community as they cheer her on. In fact, our Justina Cornell is live from Marthasville, where there is a watch party. Justina. Yeah, so we're at Twin Gables. We're told this place is special because Ruby actually used to perform here when she was 11 years old. And we're back here tonight. Now that watch party will begin in one hour, but we're already seeing a ton of support from people wearing shirts, signs on the wall, and even decor on the table with these shiny little boots. Now we're about an hour away from her hometown, which is Foley, Missouri, Lincoln County. And we stopped there earlier today to talk to some of her fans and well, there was a lot of them. Many came out with signs saying vote for Ruby. Some have known her since she was a little girl. Others have been seen her seeing her perform recently, but all are enthralled with her voice and the 16 year olds genuineness. Now, Ruby has made it to the final nine is the youngest singer in this competition. Now the artists who received the fewest votes will compete for the instant save and the five surviving artists advance to the live finale next week. However, Ruby's mom and sister tell me they believe she can make it far and they are already impressed with what she's accomplished. She's got a God-given talent, man. It's just a gift from God, and that's all I can say. I think it would be cool to show people that you can come from small towns with not a lot to, of opportunities, and you can make something of yourself. This message is to vote, vote for Ruby. That putting will arm am Central Time 7 Eastern Time. Now, if you want to learn more on how you can vote, you can head to our website, kcp.com, and go to the section as seen on TV. Reporting in Martha's Bell, Christina Cornell, 5 on your side.